Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Charles. So, Alzheimer Europe has long recognized that impairments associated with dementia can lead to disability. Recognizing dementia as a potential disability should enable people with dementia, if and when needed, to benefit from the same rights and opportunities afforded to other people with disabilities. As McGedrick and Williamson pointed out in their report on dementia rights and the social model of disability, thinking about many people with dementia as disabled people gets us thinking more from the point of view of rights, and it means we look at the environment and attitudes of others to see what can be done to make life easier and fairer for people with dementia. Article 1 of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities states that persons with disabilities include those who have long-term physical, mental, intellectual or sensory impairments, which in interaction with various barriers may hinder their full and effective participation in society on an equal basis with others. So dementia is definitely considered by this definition and counts as a disability. The emphasis on rights also touches on the ethical principles of justice and autonomy, perhaps also indirectly on the principles of non-maleficence and beneficence. Ethics is at the core of everyday life and linked to doing what is right and fair based on a complex process of reflection, taking into consideration not only principles and theories, but also values and related concepts, such as integrity, respect for privacy, personhood and dignity, as well as the situation, and most importantly, the people concerned. When considering the ethical implications of recognizing dementia as a disability, which was the topic of Alzheimer Europe's discussion paper of last year, one of the issues we reflected on was a personal experience, including the potential emotional and social impact of both impairment and disability. And in this talk, I'm just going to briefly touch on a few of these issues, drawing on the paper I just mentioned, and highlight some practical recommendations. The way we understand and explain a phenomenon such as disability affects the things we do, to, to try, the things we try to do, to remove the possible hardships associated with it. And a certain view and understanding can limit the kinds of responses and actions considered possible. Since the late 1960s, a one-sided medical understanding of disability has been fiercely criticized. It's been argued that it portrays disability in a biased manner that leads to oppressive practices and social arrangements, portraying the disability as residing in the individual and in a way looking for ways to fix that person. The social model acknowledges that disability is not merely a matter of biological impairment, but also, and perhaps primarily, a social phenomenon it's not only individuals and their alleged impairments that explain the limited opportunities, but also practices, attitudes, and social arrangements. The social model of disability has nevertheless also been criticized for placing too much emphasis on the environment and overlooking the actual experience of impairment and of disability, including the psychological and emotional impact of having impairments. And in a way, we've moved beyond or rather refined the social model. There isn't a great deal of research out there about how people with dementia feel about the idea or experience of disability in relation to dementia. And for this reason, we felt it was important to work with a multidisciplinary group of people with expertise in dementia and disability, as well as people with dementia and their supporters, many of whom are here today. The Dementia and Disability Working Group focused on reviewing the literature and drafting the various sections of the report the European Working Group took part in a full day of focused group discussions about their views and experience of disability, as well as contributing towards the further elaboration of an accessible version of the report, which is at our stand in the reception. And Helga, sorry, Helen Rochford Brennan and Helga Rohrer were members of both groups, and Alzheimer Europe is extremely grateful to both of these groups for their tremendous contribution to this project. Thinking about how people with dementia might experience and feel about disability, it's important to emphasize that disability, like dementia, is not a person's sole identity. People have multiple intersecting and overlapping identities. People choose their identities to some extent and belong to a number of communities. They may therefore find that at one point in time and in a particular context, they identify with disability and that in another they don't. 
People may also feel differently about disability, depending on their understanding of it and who defines them as having one. Accepting that one has a disability may have an emotional and sometimes psychological impact on a person. Some people may feel embarrassed or fear rejection, devaluation and stigma. Accepting or being labelled as having a disability may also have an impact on a person's autobiographical and social self and on their self-concept. According to Harry, this includes a person's story of who they are, the qualities a person displays in encounters with other people, and the beliefs that people have about who they are and the kind of lives that they lead. The two statements on this slide were made by members of the European Working Group of People with Dementia, and as you can see, they reflect two completely different perspectives. One seeing disability as a better label, in the sense of better than dementia, and the other not feeling good at all about being associated with disability. So as one person says, being disabled is more acceptable than having a diagnosis of dementia, it's a better label. And the other person says, oh, well, I've got a problem with it, to be honest, but we're all different. Some people would be upset to go down that road. I really wouldn't like to class myself as being disabled. It would make me feel a bit, you know. In their exploration of narrative accounts of disability, Dunn and Burko state that disability identity entails a positive sense of self feelings of or connection to the disability community. But there's no single unified group of people who all experience disability in the same way or who have the same goals. Clearly not everyone with disability, with dementia, sorry, identifies with disability or wants to lobby for change or to be a disability activist. Disability is also deeply personal. And the quote on this slide, which I should say is not from a person with dementia, I think expresses the desire just to get on with life. So this person says, I'm not interested in celebrating a status or, or not celebrating a status. I'm just interested in living my life. I don't have a banner. I don't have to have a banner that has to say, disability is delightful, I'm disabled, don't get in my way, don't bother me, and don't deny me opportunity. The disability rights movement is political in the sense that it was about disabled people coming together to fight for a common cause and to bring about changes in their lives. Although discrimination and prejudice still exist, the disability rights movement has been a massive force for change across the world, and, and disability activism continues to prevail in social policy and political discourses. However, according to Tom Shakespeare, the goal of disability politics should be to make impairments and disability irrelevant whenever possible, not to seek out and celebrate a separatist notion of disability pride based on an ethnic conception of disability identity. And some organizations have therefore suggested seeing the term disability not as a potentially destigmatizing label, but as a means to an end, a kind of tool, which was also reflected in our group. You might have noticed on the earlier slide that both people with dementia use the term disabled and not person with disability. And when we started work on, on this topic, we noticed that people with dementia were using both terms, and we asked if they had any preference, if either term was more acceptable than another. Some said they would be more inclined to use one term rather than the other, but nobody had strong feelings about it. And both terms can be found in the literature on disability and also used by disability organizations. Within the disability movement, the term disabled person is quite common and associated with a political message, namely that people are disabled by society. And this takes the main focus off people's impairments and, challenge, and challenges the assumption that people with impairments are the problem, so to say. <coughs> Terms such as the impaired or the disabled are sometimes considered as being a little bit problematic as they might be perceived as dehumanizing and objectifying people. The term person with disabilities, it's been argued, emphasizes something that people have, i.e. impairments which in interaction with various barriers may hinder their full and effective participation in society on an equal basis with others. And that's rather than what people are, emphasizing that people with dementia are first and foremost people. Some critics of this term nevertheless argue that people have impairments, they don't have disabilities, so there is still some, some disagreement about the terms, but both terms are used, and what counts is what people with dementia prefer, which would reflect a person-first perspective. Words do matter, 
and in the case of disability may affect whether people with dementia across Europe do or don't want to be associated with disability and they also affect or reflect the meanings that people attach to disability with potential implications for stigma. People with dementia seeking or using disability support sometimes experience hostility, criticism, judgment and lack of understanding from others. And this issue was raised by some members of the European Working Group who described feelings of guilt, shame and anger linked to their experience of using or even just requesting services for people with disabilities. They described negative and even hostile reactions from other people, including the general public and health and social care professionals, which they felt were based on a lack of understanding of impairments and subsequent disability associated with dementia. A person sitting in a wheelchair is still a symbol that's widely used for disability and accessibility, even though less than 10% of people with disabilities use wheelchairs. The impairments and possible disability associated with dementia are not always obvious. Attempts have been made to raise awareness about invisible impairments and disability. And on this slide, you can see two examples from amongst several on this website that's quoted. The wording might need a little bit of attention, but I think that the message is quite clear and something that could be developed and adapted to various situations. The experience of impairment and disability is partly linked to other people's understanding of it. So moving on now to the practical recommendations, Alzheimer Europe's discussion paper on dementia as a disability contains recommendations targeted at different stakeholders reflecting a broad number of issues which were discussed in the context of the working groups. In the context of pers the personal experience of dementia and disability, I've just highlighted four issues. First, a better, understand better understanding is needed of the experience of impairment and disability from a wide range of people with dementia, including people from various subgroups, especially the underrepresented groups such as minority ethnic groups and people who already have experience of disability. Second, it's essential to respect individual choice with regard to the extent to which a person wishes to identify with disability. And third, this should include ensuring that people with dementia are not obliged to identify as disabled persons or having a disability in order to have their human rights upheld or to access care or support. And finally, we need to raise awareness about disability and dementia, not only amongst the general public, but amongst policymakers, service providers, and health and social care professionals. Alzheimer Europe calls for a progressive and positive change in society's response to dementia based on recognition of disability accompanied by a change in attitudes and the provision of coordinated, appropriately funded and properly monitored policies, services and support. It's important to learn more about the personal experience and of impairment and disability in the context of dementia, to raise awareness and understanding of dementia as a disability and to ensure that this is truly empowering for people with dementia is beneficial to them and does not result in harm. And I'd like to leave you with this slide, which is an image of Chris Roberts, uh, the Vice Chair of the European Working Group of People with Dementia, making a formal statement about dementia and disability at the fourth European Parliament of Persons with Disabilities in Brussels last December, flanked by all the members of the Working Group of People with Dementia and their supporters. Thank you.